Hey, it's Tim here. In this video, I actually take the segment from the keynote where I got my golden hoodie, this hoodie that I'm wearing here, inverted. And I've just put it out here because in the actual uh, breakdown of the keynote, I did a slightly more detailed um, sort of explanation of uh, some of the questions I was asked during the keynote itself. So I've taken that out and I've also added some behind the scenes footage of what it was like inside of the actual conference venue because the public stream was very different to actually being there. So uh, big thanks to April for sending me some footage from inside of the actual venue itself so you can get a chance to see what that's like. Uh, it's a very short video. Thanks for watching. As ever, let's get stuck. Today, but I am so <laughs> excited because today we have a very special guest tuning oh, in gosh. live from his home in the UK, <laughs> Tableau visionary, Tim Nuena. Oh God, Also Here known as Tableau Tim, <laughs> he is... <laughs> Hi there, fam. You almost need no introduction. Um, <laughs> I wanted to stop it here because this is the inception moment where I'm in the keynote <laughs> whilst I'm doing a reaction video. I still laugh at this because it's absolutely crazy, honestly. Um, so at this point, I'm not going to kind of continue watching myself um, uh, uh, in this in this keynote. Um, the context here is that initially, it's it's sort of funny. I should have known what was coming, but initially, I, I actually didn't sort of put two or two together until um, the event. But I'd started talking to Tableau, I think two, two, three months ago, actually, about doing something at Dreamforce. And I just thought, hey, you know, as they have done with customers, um, they wanted me to talk about AI and how it could help data analysts, specifically around skills and education. And actually, this is what we sort of go on talking about. And I'll talk a bit more about my response to the questions I get asked here. But anyway, it kind of ended with a surprise. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been a pretty incredible response, frankly, from the community. I absolutely uh, like, you know, hugely grateful and genuinely shocked at the time. And I, you know, I, I think afterwards, it's sort of weird. Like the life of a creator is completely weird because, um, you know, <laughs> I, I sat in my room here in a virtual event and I'm actually in the keynote, we're live. Nothing was pre-recorded. Uh, there was incredible amounts of lag and so a bit of inside baseball. As soon as I responded the first time to Larissa, I immediately knew how much lag there was <laughs> because I could hear the feedback uh, from the, um, uh, what do you call it, from the audience, from the room through her microphone. So as soon as I said the first thing and then it came back to me two seconds, I was like, oh, crap, I need to listen to what Larissa is saying. And as soon as I think she's about to finish, start talking immediately. So the lag is like halved almost. And that's essentially what I did for the whole thing. So every time I responded, I was actually trying to do that just to cut the lag. But these are the kind of things that go through my head um, here. Like rather than <laughs> worrying or stressing about like, what I'm going to say, um, that's sort of what was going through my mind. I was kind of stressing a whole time. I actually start sweating in this video. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> I'm calling it out now because I can and it's afterwards. But nonetheless, um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this sort of whole interview. But anyway, I'm going to I'm gonna wait and maybe give a little bit more color to each of my responses in this because I think um, in this section, I had to sort of give short, sharp uh, responses. I did know what question she was going to ask me. I didn't know what was coming at the end, but... Um, I wanted to give more context here because I think it's important and it's actually, you know, I sat here and critiqued the whole entire keynote. I guess I have to critique myself. So <laughs> let's let's take this let's take this a little bit further. I might skip a also few. Also known as Tableau Tim, cringy. he is uh, an analytics <laughs> okay, consultant. It's immediately cringy. And let's skip ahead a little bit here. With more than fifty-five thousand subscribers <laughs> and more than two point eight million views. Let's double analysts. through this. Yeah. So with all of his efforts, he is helping people everywhere grow their data skills. Okay, let's and carry thank on. Thank you here. so much for joining us today. I Absolute would, a pleasure. So um, there you go. That's when I noticed lag. You have lag. so many okay. accomplishments. How did you get from your very first viz to where you are now in your career? So it started out in um, student analytics. I was looking at student data at the University of York where I studied. And <laughs> um, I ended up uh, going to another opportunity to work in marketing and communications. And the data there just sort of pulled me in. Um, the problem I had, though, is that the stories that were coming from that data weren't as compelling. Um, a lot of the social media data. So uh, another thing I'm actually quite impressed by. So we're using Zoom here. Like I'm patched into conference by Zoom and Zoom held up like it was solid. The sound was good. The video quality was coming through totally fine. I think Zoom compresses the video down to 720p. 
I had like a proper camera going, which could have pushed a 4K stream to this. But I think 1080p would have been fine anyway. Um, the kind of thing I'm interested after this is this actually worked pretty well. And I think it's a good example of, hey, if you can't get someone to the keynote, if they've got the setup, you can do a virtual setup. And that was always sort of my pitch to Tablet. Hey, I can't be there in person, but I think I've got a good enough setup to do this this way. And I think it worked out. Um, but anyway, um, really, really cool. Now, the context of this answer is about uh, how I actually started out in analytics. In essence, I used Tableau for the first time without realizing it. I was understanding uh, data about postgraduate students because I worked briefly as a, a student union president, essentially student politics here in the UK. And um, the super interesting there was that the university I went to, University of York, was one of the early adopters of Tableau. They were using Tableau to visualize student metrics and they were sharing it on their website through like an embedded sort of uh, setup. So you could have this little um, Tableau dashboard that people could explore and you could actually download your data from it and do various things. This is very early days of Tableau. And so I actually did that. I downloaded the data off a chart and then re-pivoted it and did some stuff in Excel to then go and try and visualize and understand what was going on with postgraduate students. Anyway, I didn't know it at the time, but that was Tableau. That was basically what I was using. And it's only a few years later where I, I, I then came across Tableau again, like two, three years later, I came across Tableau, this time as like a professional. And I realized, hey, I've used this before. I used it when I was looking at student politics, but now I'm using the uh, authoring experience. And so that's actually sort of how it started. And I got to that experience through uh, someone I met at university at the information lab, so Craig Bloodworth. And um, he encouraged me to say, hey, come come join this small company it's called the information lab. Um, you'll learn a lot more about data than working in marketing and communication. So that's what I did. I joined uh, back then when it was a company of 11 people. And then fast forward a decade later, um, Information Lab's grown. I've since moved on from the Information Lab. I've worked at Accenture. I now work at Endpoint Digital. And it's super interesting um, just, just to see that journey. And um, I think I'd go on to explain more about that. But in essence, um, it started off with sort of my passion for quantified self, which is what really sort of made things connect in my mind. It made me really understand that I was getting passionate about data, my own data in a specific way. And actually businesses had the same passion with their own data. People in businesses really understood their businesses as well as I understood my music data, as well as I understood my running data. And so um, in talking to people and talking to people about their data, I started to see some challenges, things that weren't quite clicking, uh, concepts that weren't working in Tableau. And so what I did way back when, if you go to the oldest videos on this channel, you'll see the first ones about layout containers. You'll see some others about Tableau 10 and design. I just thought, hey, let me make some videos just highlighting these things so that I can point people to them and see what they, they, they're they like. I started and I stopped and I gave up, basically. I did it for like three months and then I gave up. I just did the classic sort of uh, defeated setup. And what was, what was super interesting about that is that having done that, we then, uh, you know, I, I just sort of carried on for another two years, went to Accenture. And at Accenture, I came across this problem again, but this time it was with, it was with younger day travelers, so people who um, were just starting out as associates at, at Accenture and they were just starting their career and they're asking me, hey, how do I use Tableau? How do I do this? How do I do this? And it was really easy to explain to them what was going on, but I, I just ended up most of the time just getting on a call and just showing them. So I thought, huh, what if I just record videos instead and then send them the link? That would be much faster. So that's what I started doing. And then I gave up again. <laughs> and then right before COVID, um, there was an opportunity that came up to go to New York for a reason I won't go into. And um, it, it didn't play through because uh, something happened in my life that changed sort of the outcome of that. So instead of going to New York, I ended up staying here in the UK. And uh, after that, I was like really bummed out that I wasn't going to New York. So I thought, oh, you know what? God damn it. Like, honestly, seriously. What can I do? Is there a way I can do what I was going to do in New York without, um, you know, you know, without sort of changing something? Could I approach this concept in, in a bigger way? Could I make a bigger impact um, doing something else? And I looked back at my videos and I thought, you know what? Actually, I can. I can go back to that concept of videos and start making more. So I pledged to make three videos. I pledged to make a video explaining what Tableau is, and I pledged to start making videos about what's new in Tableau. So the new in Tableau videos are what came first. Four months later, you saw the What is Tableau video that was basically planned like before that video was released, well before. And um, yeah, here we are. Um, what, at 55,000 subs later and, you know, many more thousands watching every single week, every month. Um, we're hitting milestones um, and now supporting lots of people on LinkedIn. Essentially, 
taking the same concept, just scaling it up and explaining to people what Tableau is and helping people uh, understand how to use it and how to work with data fundamentally. And so that's what this conversation was actually sort of crunched down from. That was sort of the full context, but it was synthesized just to fit in this sort of three minute segment in the key back. So I, I thought that was useful context nonetheless. And that's sort of what we spoke about. And I'm not sure I'm now willing to listen to myself go through any of that in in, in like a third of the time but nonetheless uh yeah that's what it is so let's uh let's quickly i might double speed through this and just go right past the uh the end so let's watch this quickly to the time just measured likes and and, and these sort of basic metrics and so i ended up <laughs> um finding a route into analytics and uh, when i started to yeah. work with data i started to realize the businesses were super passionate about their data but the moment it clicked was when i started looking at quantified self data that's uh, the kind of data ryan was talking about data from strava uh, last and so on and so forth and it's only then i realized that the passion i had for my own data was the passion that businesses had for their data and so so um, I started to spot some common exactly. themes that people were struggling with as they were working with their data. And I thought I'd start to make a visual way of sort of helping them uh, understand those problems and, and get past them. So that's, that's how it started. And then here we are today. Such a story journey. Now, um, many people here are... I think Larissa also understood the lag was, was quite big because she, she cut in faster than I think it would have taken for that. So I think we were both doing this thing where we were kind of, she 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 knew what I was gonna say, generally speaking. So she knew when I was coming to the end of my point. So she could just actually cut in and I could do the same as well. Cause I kind of knew the general question she was gonna ask me. So that <laughs> we kind of did some great teamwork here to kind of make it work with, with less lag than the Atlantic Ocean actually allowed for. So that was pretty funny. Are still, you know, just getting started on their analytics journey. Um, and it's a little bit of a different landscape today. What has you most excited as you think about Tableau and this new AI revolution? I think AI has uh, this incredible opportunity to uh, amplify uh, people who are already exceptionally skilled, uh, sort of raise their skills up to the ceiling. But also for people who are struggling to get into these topics or struggling to pick up these skills, it actually has a, an ability to lower the barriers, almost uh, help them get into these topics. Uh, and so it, it can simplify the entry points uh, for a particular topic. We saw Hunter do a nice demo there. But also, I think it's got this ability to help people with their skills. It kind of brings them into a topic so they can okay. understand what to Google. What <laughs> so what's going through my mind right now is like, this is just stressful. Like, <laughs> I make videos all the time and it's no different to the videos except for this is live, right? And I'm not going to a script either. I'm not reading like a teleprompter. I could have, I could, I actually thought after the event, why didn't I just set this up as a teleprompter? And I wouldn't have been stressing myself out trying to make sure I thread the point I was trying to make in less sort of compressed time rather than just waffle on like I do here and like I do in most videos actually. And so you can see on my face, I'm literally stressing. If you see like sort of the, <laughs> the, 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 the sort of silver lining, it's so bad. It's, it's honestly embarrassing. But um, the room wasn't even that hot. It's just one of these things where you're panicking because, you know, that's just like how the human body works, right? And I just suddenly just got really, really hot. And then, yeah, <laughs> I just got, started panicking, I guess. I started that's sweating my head off. Oh, my build on those skills. Now, with your platform, you're bringing data skills to so many people. How? Um, what is something that you can share with us about teaching and giving back? It's um, it's a super in that meme of the guy sweating profusely comes to my face at the moment. Interesting <laughs> cycle. I think one of the things that um, I always tell people is that when I make videos, I learn a lot more about the topic than I would have done if I just went to learn about the topic. So teaching kind of makes you understand the topic to another level. Yeah. And when you put that content out there into the community, you get sort of responses. People ask you more questions. And actually, those questions are the best questions to answer because they enhance your understanding. So it's this sort of nice feedback loop that just sort of happens and um, what is nice about that is that, you know, I got my sort of break in data through the data firm and it's just been really special to sort of give it back as well. So hopefully that cycle continues and we keep building the data firm. Well, speaking of giving back, you've done... At this point, I am just absolutely... <laughs> the sweat is fully formed. I think if we'd gone on for another two minutes, you would have seen one drip down my head, honestly. I don't know why I'm tearing myself apart here, but it's just so funny. I don't know. If you've ever been on stage in front of people and had this feeling, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But anyway, here we go. So much for Tableau and for the data fam. Before I let you go, I have one more thing I'd like to share. It's a golden honey, and we have one in the mail on its way to you now. Uh, 
Tim, Amazing. you, um, <laughs> you truly embody what it means to be a Tableau community leader and a visionary. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for everything that you've done. Congratulations again. And thank you so much for joining us today. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Wow, what a magical moment. I wish you would have been here, but this was fun too. Um, back in 2020.